Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support, please subscribe. The Ghostly Hauntings of Anne Boleyn Anne Boleyn is one of the most popular and famous figures of the Tudor period. Her marriage to Henry VIII, the infamous sixth-wived king, is one of which that still captivates many today, and it shook England to its very foundations. Because of Henry's intense desire to court Anne, he was forced to seek a way out of his first marriage to long-standing Queen Catherine of Aragon. This forced through the English Reformation and a huge time of religious turbulence. However, Anne Boleyn is mostly remembered today for the fact she was brutally beheaded inside the walls of the Tower of London. On Tower Green, on the 19th of May 1536, after falling from grace at the hands of Thomas Cromwell, Anne made her way up to the scaffold with a French swordsman greeting her. Anne's beheading is a story which today presents a woman who was wrongly accused and convicted of adultery, incest and treason to kill the king. She's been labelled as the most influential and important consort that England has ever had. However, many believe that her unhappy soul and presence still haunts many of the places which were significant to her. Whether you believe in the supernatural or not, it's interesting to investigate the accounts of sightings of Anne and how they have emerged from places which were rather significant in the Queen's life. Disclaimer, some aspects of this video are based on legends that involve Anne Boleyn. Over the years, there have been many sightings of Anne Boleyn, or mysterious ghostly female figures that appear to be discontented and happy. Her ghost has been reported in at least a dozen places, all of which held some significance to her. In Norfolk, at Blicking Hall, the home in which Anne was born in, there has been a sighting of a coach, with her father, Thomas Boleyn Spectre, sitting inside it. Being drawn by a number of headless coachmen and horses, however, inside the coach, according to Victorian versions, is Anne herself. She allegedly has been seen dressed in all white and bathed in a red glow, sitting there headless, holding her bleeding head on her lap. Some have also said that when this sight reaches the door of the hall, then it vanishes and Anne has been spotted walking the rooms of the hall and a tradition emerged around this that on every 19th of May, the date of her execution, she made her appearance back at Blicking Hall. The hall itself was rebuilt shortly after the Tudor period, but sightings of Anne have placed her spectral figure in the drawing room, wearing grey, walking along the corridors and even reading a book inside the long gallery. Rather eerily, in 1979, an apparition was seen by a steward working there of Anne Boleyn. However, she left rather quickly and left behind a book of Hans Holbein's paintings. Now, it's never been proven that Anne sat for Holbein and that there is no definitive portrait painted of her by the famous German painter. Just two sketches that are unproven to be her. The sightings of Anne's ghostly figure continued at Bickling, with more sights of a woman in grey and white lace collar walking along the lawn to the lake. Another part of the hall that is said to have been haunted by her is Old Bullen's study, which has a bad atmosphere that some servants were too scared to enter it, with it being locked up and now lost for time. Anne is also said to haunt Rochford Hall in Essex, the former home of her family, which was lived in by her sister and second husband William Stafford. One of the most prominent places in Tudor England was Hampton Court Palace, and it was here where Anne and Henry VIII celebrated much of their marriage together. For example, Anne helped to refurbish large parts of the palace to update it to her tastes. In the Great Hall, the decorations on the ceiling and panellings with her and Henry's initials are intertwined. Following her fall from grace and the King's infatuation with Jane Seymour, these were all removed. However, there are a few accounts of Anne Boleyn's ghost being spotted at Hampton Court. The palace itself has been a hive over the years of paranormal activity and many incidents linked to Tudors or a female ghost. And there is a long-held belief that there is in fact Catherine Howard who patrols the long gallery, crying out for the king who was inside the chapel praying as he found out about Catherine's adulterous liaisons.
Anne's ghost has also reportedly been seen on Christmas Eve crossing the River Eden to head towards Hever Castle, her family's home in Kent. Today, Hever is a place which celebrates its link to Anne and her family, and there are other churches and castles nearby that she is said to visit. One of the most ominous sightings of Anne Boleyn has come on the River Thames. Anne was famously taken from Greenwich Palace to the Tower of London by barge for her imprisonment after her brother, along with four other men who were arrested for alleged liaisons with the King's Queen. It's said that she entered the tower through the courtyard shortly after she walked up the Queen's steps to arrive onto Tower Wharf. A ghostly vision has been seen of a barge manned by an oarsman taking Anne down the River Thames to the tower. It was said when she entered the tower that she did not enter through Traitor's Gate, and inside of the walls she broke down, collapsing, demanding where her father and brother were, as well as to hear what charges she faced. It is inside the Tower of London, where there have been many tales of Anne's spirit appearing over the centuries, and it's due to her execution that took place on Tower Green that this has emerged. The figures of a headless woman in a Tudor gown has been spotted several times near the Queen's house, which was formerly known as the Lieutenant's Lodgings, where it was believed for a while that Anne may have stayed. Interestingly, this is incredibly close to Tower Green, where her head was struck from her body, and the Queen's house, the room that many believed she was imprisoned inside, appears much colder than the rest of the tower. In 1899, during a meeting of the Ghost Club, one lady said how she saw a lady with a red carnation over her right ear, looking out of the window of Anne Boleyn's room in the Queen's house. Inside this particular room, many refused to go in, due to its scary atmosphere and the strange smell of perfume. Some people who have slept in this room in particular wake up with the feeling of being suffocated and it is said that no child is allowed to stay inside this room. The issue with these sites, however, is the fact that Anne was kept in a lodging a short walk away from what today is the Queen's house. However, many still believe that she was kept inside the Queen's house, despite this being untrue. There have also been sightings around different parts of the tower. In 1864, a guardsman stationed there saw a white figure emerging from a doorway where he was standing on duty. As it moved towards him, he challenged it. However, as it got closer, to his horror it was headless, and the soldier raised his bayonet, but the spectre walked through him. With fear, he then fainted, and was even court-martialed, being accused of being drunk and dereliction of his duties. Two other soldiers, though, revealed that they had watched from a window of the bloody tower as it approached the soldier, and they heard him scream. And for this, he was then acquitted, with the incident remaining unsolved. The Beefeaters, or Yeoman Warders, have been a staple of the tower for centuries, since the reign of Henry VIII and some have even alleged sightings of Anne's ghostly figure. In the 19th century, one said how he saw a bluish form drifting over the tower green, and he could hear heels tapping on the ground. This figure then walked towards tower green, but once she moved into a moonlit area, it was spotted that she had no head. In 1933, another soldier based there claimed that he saw a headless woman near the bloody tower, that rose out of the ground and floated towards him. At five different times and to five different people, they saw apparitions like this emerging from the Tower Green area. Bizarrely, in 1972, whilst visiting the Tower from the north of England, a young nine-year-old girl was standing by the site of the scaffold at the Tower whilst listening to a guide reciting the names of those executed on Tower Green by Axe. The child had no knowledge of Anne Boleyn and said to her mother that Anne had not been executed by Axe but by sword and she described in detail Anne's last moments, saying that the executioner even removed his shoes so that he came up on the Queen unaware to behead her. Some believed that this was a rather eerie coincidence that the child had heard of this in such detail, and believed that Anne had told her. The chapel of St Peter ad Vincula, which sits behind Tower Green, is the place where Anne was laid to rest, However, the chapel and graves were disturbed during renovation works, and today Anne's body lies under the altar. 
There have also been sightings of her inside the chapel after dark, and also around the White Tower. Many beefeaters claimed to have seen her, however didn't want to talk about their experience for fear of looking strange and out of place. Despite the story of Anne Boleyn's ghostly essence haunting many of the places which were important to her, it shows us that she has become an almost romantic figure in the story of England's past, and today she is still seen as a martyr by many. Whether you believe the accounts or not is completely up to you. However, what cannot be denied is the impact that Anne left on England in the short time she was on this earth. Her death inside the Tower of London was incredibly graphic and bloody and must have been an horrific spectacle for those who were there that day. She is a queen who changed the face of English history forever. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.